you know, our, our journey in ASEAN actually uh, started back in 2010 when we opened our first region uh, here in Singapore. And since then, we've opened regions in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Thailand. And, you know, we continue to invest really. And, and actually, just last year, we announced uh, a further $8.8 .8 billion of investment in cloud infrastructure right here in Singapore. Mm -hmm. And really, when we look at the, the, the bigger picture, and, and you know, it's, uh, it's estimated that uh, the um, digital uh, economy in ASEAN over the, over the next decade is going to add one trillion US dollars to GDP. So a lot of the kind of fundamentals that we see in the market, ASEAN's population uh, is young, you know, 61% of the population are under the age of 35. I've slightly increased the average since I moved mm -hmm. here. Uh, but, uh, but ASEAN, you know, also has the fastest growing internet population, 125,000 mm -hmm. users daily added, added to the internet. So, um, you know, we're really committed to ASEAN and, and really providing uh, uh, our, our regions and our digital services, as you say, bringing them closer to our customers to, to help them take advantage of, of, of all of these innovations. Right. And, you know, we're seeing customers from large enterprises like Cellcom Digi in, in Malaysia, Transform using generative AI to uh, customers right here in Singapore like, like Grab, so probably Southeast Asia's Indeed. most famous startup. Jeff, I guess the, the, the key question here, the thing I think many are interested in is this will need to rely on a strong backbone. And AWS has not been shy in investing in new data centers across the region. If I'm not mistaken, Indonesia, Malaysia, Thailand, Singapore. Are there other markets you're looking to roll out into in terms of hardware, in terms of data centers? Or is this, uh, is this it for now, at least, while AWS tries to consolidate and gets foothold in the market? Sure. We, we, you know, we're really, uh, I think, pleased with just the investments that we made and see just you know, tr tremendous growth potential, both for, for cloud and AI services across, across ASEAN. Uh, you know, we continue to assess opportunities in, in, in the market and so on, but uh, uh, really, we're really focused now on building out the regions that we've, we've created. Mm -hmm. And so uh, you know, we see many uh, you know, different industries being transformed from financial services, transformations in, in banking. So you know, customers such as Techcom Bank in Vietnam, Crunchy Bank in Thailand, you know, transforming their operations with AWS to, to digital banks like uh, Trust Bank and, and Boost Bank as well, you know, building new financial services for, for ASEAN on, 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 our, on our region. Right. So, um, so, yeah, there's, uh, yeah, there's you know, ju just, you know, just unprecedented demand and so on that we're seeing both for digital modernization and accelerating advanced AI adoption. I'm curious, what is, is our resources, whether they be power or water, the biggest constraint in terms of rolling out any expansion strategy in offering cloud services? Because we talk about AI data centers yeah. and the amount of uh, not just power, but water you're going to need to actually drive this demand that seems to be growing exponentially. Yeah. How does that uh, perhaps, uh, could, does that provide like a, an upper bound or a limit yeah. towards how quickly you can actually uh, scale up and how, and how quickly you can expand across this yeah, region? No, th thanks for the question, JP. And, you know, I think, I think we, you know, really, you know, forces us to continue to innovate, which is, you know, I think in our DNA and what we're, we're really famous for. And, and when I think about the uh, innovations from an energy perspective and, uh, you know, building a, a carbon-free future, that's really what we're focused on. Uh, so right from the climate pledge that uh, we created back in 2017 to be net zero by 2040 across Amazon. You know, we now power all of Amazon's uh, operations globally with renewable energy. Uh, actually, we're involved in over 600 renewable projects globally. So, um, you know, there's, uh, actually we're the largest purchaser of renewable energy globally as well. So a lot of what we're doing is really, uh, you know, fu fueling that energy transition. But from a data center perspective as well, we're really innovating just in, in the data centers and actually the new uh, data center infrastructures that, we've, uh, that we're building. If if, you, if customers uh, move applications to AWS, they're about 4.1 times more energy efficient. There's a recent report just published by uh, Accenture citing that, and actually uh, an application moving to AWS can reduce its carbon footprint by up to 99%. So, so again, we're seeing many customers really uh, actually use moving to AWS's cloud as a way right. to help achieve their sustainability goals. And, and 